world's top economic powers struggled to find common ground over the weekend. In his first appearance at an international forum, Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin reiterated the president's concerns to G20 finance officials that the U.S. has a bad deal uh, from the current global trade setup. While he was able to fend off a push to pr reject protectionism, the leaders did not reach an agreement, and two days of negotiations ended in stalemate. Joining me right now is the spokesperson for Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin. He is the Assistant Secretary of the Treasury for Public Affairs, Tony Sayag. And Tony, congratulations. This Thanks. is probably the first time you're with us post this new position. Indeed, Maria, and thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I'm really happy you're here. You had a trip. Uh, to Germany for the G20 meeting. Tell us how it went. So this was the secretary's first foreign visit as secretary. So it included stops in London where we met with the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Hammond. Uh, Prime Minister May was very gracious to stop by that meeting and meet the uh, secretary as well. We met later with Governor Carney from the Bank of England. And then we went to Berlin. This is now all ahead of the G20 in Baden-Baden. In Berlin, though, uh, I think Secretary Mnuchin forged a very strong relationship with the finance minister of Germany, uh, Wolfgang Schäuble. Uh, he is presiding over these proceedings as Germany is the host country of the G20. And uh, then Baden-Baden was our destination where we participated with the finance ministerial. How fascinating. I want to ask you about Schäuble because he has been really uh, had a leadership role in, in terms of international e economics. But first, you mentioned Theresa May stopped and said mm -hmm. hello to, to your group and to the Treasury Secretary. Mm -hmm. We just got news today that she's going to use March 29th as mm -hmm. her date to begin this exit from Britain. Do you see an impact to the U.S.? I'm sorry, the exit from the European Union. Do you see an impact once Britain leaves the European Union on the U.S.? Well, all of these are obviously topics of conversations that we participated in during much of the G20 and 18 bilateral meetings. Uh, we have a very special relationship with the United Kingdom. Uh, Prime Minister May has indicated very clearly that she had intended to do this by the end of March. Okay. So we will watch closely and work closely with them as they try to make this transition. Yeah, because that's one of the priorities, right, for, for your team and for Wilbur Ross to do a bilateral with the U.K., a bilateral world trade deal. Isn't that right? Well, true, but the, the key point that Secretary Mnuchin made during this is that we don't view multilateral and bilateral trade agreements as mutually exclusive. So clearly everything is on the table in these regards. The other point that I think he made as it relates to trade, Maria, that really should get a lot more uh, visibility is he thinks trade should be a win-win situation. The United States has historically been the most open trading market. We're among the biggest trading markets. We're very um, competitive in what we offer our trading partners by way of terms. We're just looking for a situation that there's more balance and that our workers, our products, our businesses have the same ability to play on an even playing field. And, and, and that's what was really emphasized by the secretary over in Europe. And that's what I want to talk about this morning because there's been a lot of discussion this weekend about the fact that the foreign uh, finance ministers wanted to get a line in the communique there that says we will reject protectionism and we will, you know, we will reject any uh, appearance of protectionism. And that line didn't actually make it into the communique because of Steven Mnuchin's pushback. He wants fair trade, not necessarily just free trade. He said the U.S. is always at the, at the disadvantage with these trade deals. Isn't that right? We want balanced trade. And there are clearly uh, times in our history, and we do today, uh, embrace the open trading market. However, there are some agreements that we have to re-examine to make sure that the American worker does not get hurt by our, our fair trade policies from our vantage point. What we're looking for, frankly, Maria, is just an even playing field. I do think that the ministers ultimately did reach consensus on trade language that does support free, fair, and balanced trade. And that was a very significant development over at the G20. And I think something that Secretary Mnuchin was able to very successfully uh, maneuver because of the fact that he did have such a good bilateral relationship with so many of these finance ministers, his counterparts overseas. You, Maria, aside from, as I mentioned earlier, the clear program of the G20 finance ministerial conference, Secretary Mnuchin made it a point to have 18 bilateral meetings with his colleagues one-on-one, -on -one, wow. really forging the politics of what we call personal diplomacy. These are important building blocks for future progress. And remember, the administration is, is a couple months old right now. We, we have a long time to, to work with these partners, and I think Secretary Mnuchin took a humongous step forward in building that type of personal relationship and goodwill uh, over this trip. 18 bilateral meetings, wow, one-on-ones. Uh, you said he, he forged a special relationship 
with uh, Schäuble from Germany. Tell yeah. us about that. So as I mentioned, we stopped in Berlin and we had our first press conference in Berlin on this trip. Uh, this was the result after a, a bilateral meeting, individual meeting between Secretary Mnuchin and Finance Minister Schäuble, whose history as a servant to, to the people of Germany is amazing. This is a man who started serving in the Bundestag since the 1970s. He led the reunification effort uh, of Germany uh, in, in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, he is somebody who I think Secretary Mnuchin had tremendous uh, connection to, really was sincerely moved by his, his story, his wisdom. And the men were able to not only just have the formal meetings, they afterward went to dinner in Berlin together, one on one, and it was clear that the two of them decided to embrace each other as partners trying to move the world and global economy forward because the most important part of this conversation, Maria, was growth right. and economic growth here in the United States, but also global growth. That's a really important point to make, and that's the one thing that I think these markets are looking at. The priority of this administration being growth has just stimulated markets and, and stimulated new conversations uh, throughout America. With these 18 one-on-one -on -one meetings, tell us where the most onerous relationships are. I mean, what will be <laughs> the Treasury Secretary's priorities in terms of figuring out where the, where the growth opportunities are and relationships are and, and what's most onerous? So I think, obviously, leaders have to lead, and there was a complete embrace by many uh, including Finance Minister Schäuble, for the United States' historic role as a leader in world finance and economics. And Secretary Mnuchin made it clear to his counterparts that in America, we're going to have 3% growth, economic growth. That's our goal. That was very well received. And that then created a larger conversation, even among some of the countries who may not agree necessarily with us on all our policies, but that that should be the focus of these 20 strong industrial economies to have global growth. What does this mean for policy, Tony? I mean, how should we expect policy to change given these conversations at the G20? Well, it's an important starting point because, again, as I indicated, I think when you talk about the long term, these are the counterparts, the partners. These are the nations that we have the most successful and important relationships with as far as the world economy and world finance is concerned. So what it did was create a confidence, I believe, that the United States has a rational economic policy that we're promoting very strongly. Strongly, but that even in our differences, we can work together to resolve them. It set an important tone. And this is the tone that I think the Secretary and President Trump are clearly going to take to their partners at the G20 this summer, uh, which is the larger meeting of the heads of state and government of the G20 country. Yeah, and interesting that the president has been meeting with some of those counterparts. He had Angela Merkel here mm -hmm. while, while Treasury Secretary Mnuchin was with uh, the German finance minister. 